Hello and welcome to the Ready to Loop webinar. We're really pleased to be presenting this webinar uh, to you today. And uh, what we're basically doing is to uh, spend the next hour together with you telling you about the new exciting project we have supported by the Danish Industry Foundation, Industry Front, which is about making sure that we are ready to transition to circular economy, not just in one company, but throughout whole value chains. So for the next hour, we're going to be spending time hearing a little about the need for circular economy, the need to know our readiness, the need to actually uh, engage partners in the value chain, and then the how we can do that and how we're planning to support that over the next four years, in fact, uh, on the Ready to Loop project. So my name is Tim McAloon, by way of introduction. And together with Daniela Pigoso, we're leading the Ready to Loop project, and we're going to be leading the webinar today. And we're doing it as a dialogue, and we're going to be inviting some of our partners onto the stage to discuss with us what the potentials are for um, joining in the Ready to Loop project. But uh, of course, before that, what we'd like to do is to tell a little bit about what the project is and why we're actually interested in looking at the, uh, the circular economy from a value chain perspective. So maybe, Daniela, a little bit about what the background is for why we should actually be focusing on circular economy in the first place. Yeah, and that's a really important question. You know, we've been talking about carbon reductions last two weeks in the COP26. And uh, the good news is that circular economy can really help us in this transition from a carbon intensive economy to a carbon free economy. In fact, about 45% of the potential that we have to reduce carbon emissions are linked to circular economy. But yet only 8.6% of the world is circular as of today. And then the big question becomes, how can we actually accelerate this transition to a circular economy? And through our previous project, uh, Match, we've been engaging with a number of different companies to try to understand how ready they are for this transition. Right now in the platform, we have a little bit over than 300 companies. And what we could see actually is that only 25% of them have actually started to collaborate across the value chain for integrating their circular economy initiatives. And it's our belief in this project that one of the reasons why the world is only 8.6% circular is exactly because of that. There's too little collaboration across companies um, in all different value chain positions, and we need to change it if we are to achieve the 1.5 degree target for CO2 reductions. Yeah, that's true. And <clears throat> maybe a little bit about um, why the value chain uh, approach. So we're seeing that the, the figures are, are quite compelling because only 25% have actually started to work or to think about value chain collaboration. Yeah. So there's a whole 75% of companies we've seen uh, that have not yet begun with their practices. Um, but why should they, and, uh, and, and what's so different actually about working within the value chain? Yeah, what we see today is that actually companies that are successful in this transition to circular economy are the ones that are establishing strategic collaborations, either with suppliers mm -hmm. upstream in the value chain or with uh, downstream collaborators as well. And uh, we see that this seems to be the only way to really achieve the benefit, because in the end of the day, there's no one company that can make this transition to circular economy alone. Yeah. So let's have a look at how we're actually going to be addressing the, the Ready to Loop project uh, over the next years to come. Uh, just by way, actually, of, of uh, further introduction. So the Ready to Loop project is uh, building on top of uh, a project which we've been running with the Danish Industry Foundation over the last four years called MATCH or some call it matcha, uh, and that stood for making the transition to circular economy. And in that particular project, we focused on production companies or manufacturing companies. And uh, those 381 uh, companies that Daniela mentioned in, uh, just uh, previously, uh, basically uh, were uh, mostly from the manufacturing sector. 
And what we've, we've seen is the need and the, the desire to broaden that uh, view to the, to the whole of the value chain. So what we're going to do now is just have a look at uh, a little bit about what we're actually looking at. We can see that uh, production companies and manufacturing companies are uh, really important to, to focus on. So uh, with, with the focus on why uh, circular economy should be focused for manufacturing companies, I think has become very clear both within the companies that we've been working on, on the, the match project before now, and now on the ready to loop project, uh, but also generally uh, in, in Europe in particular, uh, manufacturing companies are doing a lot about bringing circularity into their strategies and uh, trying to see how can we go from strategy actually to action. And that's where, where we've been coming in to, to help to bring strategy to, to action. But what we're also seeing is that, uh, as we just uh, briefly discussed, is that the manufacturing company itself is not enough if we really are to, to transition to circular economy. So a true circular economy will actually only arise when there's actually a cooperation, a collaboration across the value chain. And that is all the way from uh, raw materials to start with, um, to, through component manufacturers, to manufacturing companies, which has been the focus of the match project so far, to logistics and distribution companies, through retailers, uh, to con the final consumers or users of the products and systems, and then finally to what we're today calling increasingly value recovery companies, which uh, in the olden days used to be called waste management companies. But the idea is that as we close the circle, we're looking at trying to uh, keep the value retention within the circle as, as long and as often as possible, so that the value retention companies are providing uh, uh, raw materials uh, which are not raw, but they're actually been used before, uh, maybe at a component level, uh, maybe at a, actually a product level, but uh, if nothing else, at a material level. So basically, what's new in the Ready to Loop uh, project, or one of the many things that are new in the project, is that we're going to be expanding the platform actually by a, a factor of seven in terms of what we're focusing on. We're going to have not just the manufacturing companies, but all of those other uh, positions of the value chain represented. And a little bit later on, we're going to look at how we're actually going to uh, to build that and, and what we're going to be focusing on there in terms of the, uh, the actual different um, uh, value chain positions mm -hmm. over time. But let me maybe ask a question in relation to that, Tim, because I guess there's no question that value chain collaboration is important. Why is that not happening today? What are the key challenges that companies face when they try to collaborate? Yeah, so uh, there's, there's many challenges there. I think that companies have started to look internally with, uh, as to, to see how they can see the opportunities uh, together with working in, in uh, the value chain. It's not always very obvious just now what the business case is, um, whether it actually is, uh, will make sense from a business perspective. Uh, there could be lots of risks involved, of course. Uh, current legislation may not be uh, uh, be fitting. Knowledge, of course, is uh, one thing which is uh, uh, something which needs to be built and capacity mm -hmm. needs to be built mm -hmm. along the value chain. But also looking at the actual opportunities, what opportunities are there uh, to be there for the taking to see what value chain collaborations are there. Mm -hmm. The good thing is there's nice examples out there of uh, where the uh, value chain collaboration actually is succeeding and where the uh, um, there are some starts of uh, nice closed loop systems. But the important thing is to understand is that if we really are to achieve this uh, circular economy, a true circular economy, then we need to be able to look at uh, the, uh, the, the closing of the actual cycles. Mm -hmm. And how do you see, Tim, the collaboration uh, within different positions in the value yeah. chain? Would that be the same if you talk about collaborating upstream or, or downstream? Yeah, I think that the, 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 uh, it, it would be different depending on the different uh, value chain partners. And that's why, again, it's important to understand uh, uh, our customer and our customer's customers or our supplier and our supplier's suppliers. There's different focuses uh, depending on what your starting point is. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do in this product is to uncover what those uh, focus areas should be and how to, to understand the, uh, the good starting points, but also our readiness to, to indeed understand uh, where to start collaborating. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. 
and uh, who is involved in that? Yes, project? we have a look at that. So basically, the Ready to Loop project is uh, building in the, the the following way. So as we mentioned at the start, it is uh, supported by the uh, Danish Industry Foundation, Industrien's Fund, and they supported uh, both the Match project that went uh, ahead of this, and now this Ready to Loop project, which is running for the next four years, in fact. Uh, the main partner in the project is DTU, the Technical University of Denmark, and we're responsible for the knowledge creation, for building the platform, for making sure that the new value chain positions are uh, uh, are created, and the whole logic behind the platform that we're uh, going to be use, using, and then the tools and the methods. So that's the main role that we're going to be playing on the project uh, mm -hmm. this time. And something new that we're doing uh, this time for the Ready to Loop project is to bring key partners in which uh, have a different uh, uh, types and flavors. First of all, we want this project to get out into industry and uh, we want to get it as far out as possible into uh, different companies and different sectors and the different value chain positions, of course. Mm -hmm. So for that, we have uh, two consultancy partners on the project, uh, Vigan Moore and uh, Rambul. And uh, those two consultancies are uh, certified uh, ready to loop uh, consultants, and they're going to be our collaboration partners on the project for the next uh, four years. The way in which uh, the uh, two consultancies, Vigan Amor and uh, Rambu, are going to be working is that they're going to be uh, carrying out accelerator projects with a number of uh, companies out in the different value chain uh, positions. And you can see here it's quite ambitious. We've said 42 accelerators per consultancy over four years. Um, and that's the idea is to run these accelerator projects. So we make sure that uh, number one, companies at different value chain stages can see and assess their current readiness. Number two, to identify a step to, to make that more pronounced and, and, and more accelerated. And then number three, to reassess, did we make a change and what do we learn in terms of our readiness, both within our company, but also across the value chain to make the change for circular economy. Mm -hmm. So that's the, you say the right hand side of the model, our key partners here. On the other side, to keep ourselves uh, uh, on our toes and make sure that the project is really uh, consolidated in terms of uh, the societal impact that we're having, we have three uh, main organizations who are on our steering group. We have uh, the Manufacturing Academy of Denmark, or MADE as it's called. It's a large Danish uh, platform for manufacturing research, and uh, the uh, director of MADE is on the, uh, uh, the steering committee. We have the uh, Danish Business Authority, and uh, which has a, a fantastic outreach to all sorts of different types of businesses, from startups to established businesses. And then we have uh, the Confederation of Danish Industry, and uh, one of the directors from the Confederation of Danish Industry, also on our steering committee. And the idea is that we make sure that the work that we're doing and the platform as we develop it is as relevant as, as uh, possible for the, the Danish industry mm -hmm. as, we're, uh, as we're developing and going forward. And also to help us to reach out to the different uh, sectors and different types of the, uh, uh, of the area there. But that's briefly, uh, in an overall way, about the, uh, the, the way in which we're setting up the, uh, you could say, the stakeholder network for uh, the Ready to Loop project. But we actually have two of those stakeholders with us two today. Two special guests. Yeah, indeed. So I think we, maybe we should invite uh, Meda and Nikki onto the stage. So uh, as uh, they're, they're coming on, so Meda uh, Rams is the is chief advisor at Vegan Mall, and uh, Nikki Bai is a senior manager at uh, at Rambul. So come a bit closer, <laughs> and we can, uh, um, keeping our social distance at the same time. <laughs> so uh, welcome to to you uh, both, and maybe first of all, Meda. Yeah. Uh, welcome to you and, and on the stage and we're, we're really excited all of us about the ready to loop project and uh, maybe you could just introduce um, Vegan More as a, a company you've been working with sustainability for many years and then also just very briefly and then also about um, how Vegan More and, and in fact the, the, the two consultancies are going to be working on the ready to loop project. Yes of course and, and thank you for having us here today. Uh, Vegan Mori is, as you said, uh, a specialized consultant in uh, sustainability um, and have done so for the past 
15 years. Um, and we have seen this change that you described from companies focusing a lot on their own energy consumption uh, and their own uh, address, so to say, uh, to looking one more towards the, the value chain. And that's why we think this platform is really a good help um, for, for companies and also as consultants uh, for us to help the companies yeah. to realize how uh, exactly to collaborate through the value chain. Great. And, yeah. and your role on the Ready to Loop project, how's that going to, to yes. unfold? We will, uh, both us and, and Rambo, we will uh, facilitate this process. Um, so we will help companies register for the platform, go in, fill out this uh, questionnaire that you have developed. Uh, they will get out some results and we will help them analyze this result mm -hmm. and then have some workshops where they can pick, uh, prioritize a few areas to work in depth with and we will help them through that process as well and facilitate the, pro the workshops all the way through and uh, we will end the project with the with giving them like a strategic direction uh, in this circular economy um, world which is can be quite complex so we will uh, really try to lead them on the right path great so sort of a stepping stone between the good intention measuring our readiness yes. and actually doing something about it and holding the hand through that process yes so, exactly yeah. Thanks, Mila. Welcome to you as well, Nikki. Good to have you here today. Would you mind maybe introducing Rainbow and uh, what you've been doing in terms of sustainability and also what's the additional value proposition that companies get by engaging those accelerators? Thank you. Thanks, Daniel and Tim. Uh, happy to be here. Um, well, Rumble is a uh, global engineering and consulting company. We are about 16,000 16, uh, employees uh, globally, 300 offices in 35 countries, and we produce solutions for our clients uh, in different fields, which can be energy, uh, buildings, uh, transport solutions, uh, water, and so forth. And I'm in that part, which is uh, management consulting, mm -hmm. senior manager in that part, where we basically uh, pull those, let's say, more technically uh, oriented solutions together to solutions uh, which work for the companies, for our client companies, for instance, organizationally or uh, strategically uh, defined. And I think our value add together with uh, Vegan Moore uh, can be that we come from the, uh, from the side which is bringing things into action, really from the technology and from the new uh, methodological approach maybe to what works in the, in the company actually. So f just uh, like Vegan Mo, our, our role, we consider this in, in bringing it on the road and helping uh, the accelerator uh, partners in really uh, making it happen in their organizations. And maybe as a last part, the global perspective. Um, I'm, uh, for instance, in currently in projects with uh, uh, colleagues in both Singapore and the US and of course in Europe. So the global perspective is also something we can bring on the table. Yeah, and I think it's really important for us to say also to you is that the Ready to Look platform is open to every company that wants to be part of it and evaluate the readiness. Um, but if you want to have an extra support and more help to actually implement all of the good ideas that you, you come from using the Ready to Look platform, then the accelerators with uh, both Meta and Niki are a really good idea uh, to engage. Definitely. And we're going to be hearing more about how the, the platform will expand over the next couple of years in terms of the different value chain positions uh, a little bit later. And I think that as that complexity comes, you'll be extremely in, important to help us to hold the hand about how different value chain partners can, can uh, play together as well across different sectors. But I know that you have a, an engagement model with you, and I think it'd be nice to show that as well. And before I forget as well, if you have any questions online, please put them in the, uh, the Q&A. We have a moderated chat. And uh, if you put the questions in, we're trying to give uh, plenty of time at the end for your questions. I forgot to say them in the start, <laughs> but back to the program. Uh, so um, about the uh, engagement models, how, how does that actually look uh, uh, for, for you, the, uh, the, the two consultancy partners? Yeah, um, maybe I can start to take the first part. This uh, engagement model uh, is the same, of course, for both of us. Um, and we have uh, made this very structured process uh, to help companies use this platform starting with the of course uh, a kickoff meeting where we will have uh, one or two or three contacts from the company uh, owning the project uh, within the company uh, and we will set up uh, the entire process from there uh, starting with the 
with them to give us the names and emails of everyone to actually go in and answer these questions. And here it is really important that as many as possible from all across the company answer the questions uh, in the platform to get the best results. So what we will do is then go back at everyone uh, in the platform so that when we meet for workshop one, everyone will have a user and will be ready to log in, answer the, the questions, and we will do that together on this workshop. Um, so we are there facilitating, helping uh, everyone um, through it and also giving, of course, some insights into what is circular economy um, and, and so on on that, on that workshop. Yeah. And, and then if I take over saying? for the, for the uh, remainder of the entire, uh, or let's say the, the uh, uh, after this first workshop, uh, there will be an analysis phase where we as consultants look into what are the the overall uh, topics that are that are relevant and what could be uh, elaborated further. We will be in close contact with uh, the client companies and, um, and we'll then prepare based on that a workshop number two, where we make uh, deep dives basically on, uh, on two initiatives or types of initiatives. One can, we think, um, be more strategic maybe and the other one more technical. Uh, but really uh, preparing deep dives for, for those uh, two, two um, let's say, initiatives. Um, and uh, we'll then uh, elaborate further on this, um, uh, uh, again, in close collaboration with the client companies on uh, uh, developing uh, both cost and uh, environmental perspective, for instance, CO2 uh, uh, footprint of that solution. What does it actually bring? Uh, but also uh, a 12-month uh, action plan for you, so to say, to take home and say, uh, 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 we can work with this in this and that way, and um, a, uh, a list of recommendations in general from the, from the project and from the learnings. And, um, and then in the final step, doing this in uh, uh, presenting that and ha having a, a final dialogue about this. This entire process, seven-step process, is about uh, to be uh, uh, lasting 10 weeks. And will also, of course, involve the company, uh, the client company, with, for instance, one person and some hours, of course, to be put in. But, but we will bring our our collective uh, experience in the field and uh, really help, as Med also said, help you get uh, get going. Who who's the the ideal audience for for such a an accelerator uh, project? So I'm thinking, I guess, the companies will be different sizes uh, from hmm. from larger to small. But if you were to, 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 to choose and say, if you could uh, choose the ideal audience for the ideal people for an accelerator project for a large company and maybe a smaller company, what, what would you, you say the, the different competencies or the different, not competencies, the, the different uh, professional backgrounds will be, will be smart to have along? Is it just the sustainability manager or is it uh, everybody in the company? Yeah, it's, as I said, uh, mentioned before, I think it's a really good idea or it's necessary to have everyone as yeah. someone representing every part of yeah. your company uh, because the sustainability manager might have one view of, uh, of how ready uh, you are in circular uh, economy transition and, and the people actually doing the work uh, might have a completely different view. So it's important to get uh, as many as possible uh, engaged. Yeah, maybe I can add on that. I think that one of the great experiences that we had during the match project was really in those workshops where we brought lots of people together from the same organization and we start discussing what is being done for circular economy implementation across many different dimensions from strategy and business model down to product and service development, the operation, maintenance, take back and so forth. And those uh, workshops, they are extremely interesting for the people in the company that then become change, change agents in their own organizations. So definitely I think this is a, a really way to go about it, but lots of ideas might come in those workshops. Yeah. Then how do we further prioritize and decide where to focus? Well, that would be based on the priorities of the client. And again, on our experience, what are trends in a, in a certain sector, for instance, what are solutions that work not the least uh, 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 legislative developments, um, uh, the hard push from, for instance, European Commission in the field of circular economy, of course. Um, and I'd like to add to those competencies, actually, one thing is, which is uh, contractual uh, knowledge. So basically, how do you then make the, the connection between uh, two different partners, uh, 
which is also something we, for instance, work with if needed. Um, so both the purchasing, the production, the design, and so forth, and also these like uh, uh, contractual uh, uh, context in the circular economy context. So that's something we, we imagine uh, bringing on the table. Yeah. Well, how about the question that may come, and it's come before, that circular economy is just new wine in old bottles. I generally just, uh, tend to say uh, yes, and I'm the wine. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and then who's the bottle? But uh, what's the difference between taking a circular economy uh, approach to your normal sustainability pilots or tools? What do you see as the extra that we're going to be offering uh, f through the accelerator projects here that companies maybe are grappling with just now? Because I think that, that uh, we've discussed before uh, in our preparations for this project as well that uh, what companies seem to be uh, missing is that, uh, that bridging the gap between the good intention and actually getting going with something there comfortable with and I think that's a very key role that you as consultants are, are playing. What would you say as, as being the as the main new elements that, that you're you're hoping to bring to the to the project? Uh, well we hope of course to give them a uh, companies a clear view of what is circular economy, what strategies can you actually take? Because when you say circular economy, uh, you might have a lot of different ideas of what it can be. Uh, and is it just uh, recycling the steel that we use or, or is it actually more than that? And it is, yeah, to give them a clear view, it's actually much more. And this collaboration that you talk about is really, really important. Um, so it's not just what you do, it's what you can do together with the rest of your value chain. Um, it's just uh, exactly to add upon that the, I mean, we have SDG 17, which is <laughs> partnerships uh, since 2015 already. One, and then the second element was uh, collaboration and really intensive collaboration and the upstream of uh, COP26, uh, I heard a, 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 a colleague saying radical collaboration is needed. So really pushing this element of working together also internally in a company. If you have a big company, then the different departments within the company need to collaborate just as well as of course with the external partners. So it's the collaboration element which is key. And you see just now many companies committing to the science-based targets and the scope three is actually requires value chain collaboration, right? So how do you see the role of circular economy in actually achieving the very ambitious targets that many companies are defining for themselves by 2030? Is that the way to go? Uh, at least in a door opener, I think, uh, seriously, uh, uh, a, a, an instrument to start a discussion of how can such a collaboration be, in, for instance, on, on data in the first place, on a dialogue, what's, what are strategic aims, but then in, in the end also on practical uh, items like uh, physical collaboration or these kind of things, but, but really uh, from, from awareness to discussion, concrete discussion, data exchange, uh, these kind of things, uh, re um, uh, reporting for instance, mm -hmm. uh, but of course also to then proactively design solutions together in this aspect that uh, the, the uh, best solutions are developed, uh, mm -hmm. not alone by one partner, but, no. but together with others. Yeah, great. Meta, Nikki, we're really looking forward to the collaboration with both uh, Ambru and Vegan Moro over the next uh, years, and uh, really looking forward to seeing which organizations, and which companies you can get uh, on board uh, this, this project and, and the platform for the sake of themselves and also so that we can see how to learn from uh, companies in that transition. So many thanks for, for coming on stage uh, today. And what we're going to do now is to ask basically, uh, Daniela, could you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the timeline for the project and how that is going to be phased in so that we can see where to expect which particular focus mm -hmm. uh, through the next four years of the project? Yeah, of course, we can do that. And uh, by off today, actually, you can have, read, have access to the platform to have a look into the manufacturing position in the value chain. It is uh, ready um, and it's uh, available. So there are 30 different questions that will help you to understand how ready you are for the circular economy. And one of the reasons why we developed this approach is that at the time, about four years ago, there was lots of talk already about circularity, but companies didn't really understood exactly what it was and how uh, feasible it would be for them. And that was the reason we started with the manufacturing companies. By next year, 
we are adding two more positions in the value chain. Uh, we are developing them as we speak just now and raw materials and component manufacturers will be available already in 2022 for you to be able to start bringing your upstream uh, suppliers in the readiness assessment. And the reason for that again is that we understood that a company can be 100% ready for this transition, but if their suppliers and if their value chain are not, then probably there will be lots of challenges in getting their ideas implemented, such as take back systems, for instance. Then by 2023, we start busy and we will continue developing two more positions in the value chain. Our focus at that time will be retailers and logistics. So how do we bring together logistic organizations to enable not only forward logistics, but also reverse logistics? And how do we engage the retailers uh, in, in further promoting the circular solutions that we are putting in the market? And then finally, by 2024, we finish up with the last two positions in the value chain that are uh, the consumers. Uh, we all play a very important role in this chain and it's our decisions in the end of the day that will define the success of the circular uh, initiatives. But then we we'll, of course also look into value recovery and what are the different types of uh, stakeholders that can support us with upgrading, repairing, remanufacturing, refurbishing or recycling uh, the materials. And by doing that, the goal is to, of course, decouple value creation from resource consumption and keep um, fulfilling needs to the highest extent possible. And uh, I guess it goes without saying again, Tim, that all of that is, of course, uh, available to, to everybody to, to join. And if you need an extra help, then I'm sure that Matt and Nikki will be happy to, to help you in, in moving forward with that. Yeah, absolutely. Tell us a little bit about the how we're building the different stages and the different value chain positions there. What's the work that, uh, behind that and, and where we're actually going with that? Yeah, so we could say it's a, a science-based approach for building the different dimensions. What we are doing is to look into literature, the state of the art, first of all, to understand what are the best available practices for making this transition to a circular economy across different positions in the value chain. We are then clustering those areas into some big dimensions that will help us to understand what it involves to make this transition. And then we have an extensive uh, testing of those with different stakeholders. So companies that are within those positions, associations of companies in those positions, experts, up until we get to a moment that we are ready to put that online. Then all of these will be available uh, in the ready to look platform. If you haven't had the chance to have a look into that yet, we'd really recommend you to do so, so that you can understand how the assessment is done, um, how long it takes, and what are the results that you can get out of it. But maybe you can share some of the experience from our match companies and what yeah, they actually got from it. Yeah, so I think that that one of the most important things that the companies uh, that we've uh, collaborated with on on the, the platform as it is ready today um, are uh, it's that communication within the organisation in terms of uh, as, as we were talking about before with uh, with Mira and Nikki about making sure across the organization we have a common uh, viewpoints we've had a couple of companies already in the, the the match project which was the predecessor to to ready to loop which actually used it as a, a form of a, a start to a change management process mm -hmm. i think the highest amount of individuals we've had in the uh, the, the the companies have basically been um uh, 83 people i think that uh, that yeah, went into impressive. the platform so uh, yeah, and you can see the picture of the uh, of the platform and the uh, uh, the diagnosis process here in front of you. So basically, uh, as you see on the screen, um, you you can see that the the, the current uh, the, uh, tool, uh, which is based on on, on the, the match tool, is a diagnosis in eight dimensions. And uh, basically, what it's doing is to point out your strengths and opportunities. Uh, in terms of the the green areas or the gray areas, the, the green areas are the strengths and the gray areas are the opportunities. It's giving you a, 
a readiness profile, which is a really important to, as a, you could say, as a boundary object to discuss across the organization. Uh, why, why can it be that we're actually not ready in a certain area? And that's actually been one of our really uh, nice uh, experiences, hasn't, hasn't it? Uh, companies uh, starting with um, a, some form of a pilot, uh, a business pro uh, process pilot, where actually we find out that the organization needs to be more ready before uh, actually getting uh, getting started. Or we would like to have a, um, uh, to help um, our customers in the, um, the use phase in, in terms of maintenance um, uh, programs, but actually we don't have enough data to, uh, to know, or we don't have the readiness to, to, to be able to know how to collect what type of data and how to analyze it. Um, and maybe for some, we haven't even understood what the, uh, the neither the market nor the the, the policy or regulation um, uh, barriers or or hurdles could be uh, uh, before going on to something. So I think that opening our eyes through the readiness profile and getting a full picture as to uh, where we are today has been really important. Then, as those of uh, you who are watching as well today will will know, we have a benchmarking facility in the platform so that you can benchmark yourself internally within a company. So if you have more than one business unit or uh, within the organization, you can go in and benchmark yourself uh, across um, or, uh, the, the different departments in, in the company. And you can also uh, benchmark externally with um, the uh, companies in the platform who are either with all of them that have uh, responded or the ones within a particular uh, uh, filtered area, uh, for example, it could be electronics companies within Denmark, which have uh, over 100 uh, employees, for example. Mm -hmm. What we don't do is to allow any benchmarking if there's data with uh, for less than five companies in order to, of course, make sure that we're really, really careful with the, the data that has been uh, entered into the, the, the platform. But that benchmarking also gives a, uh, an idea as to um, what are others doing and what can we learn generally about the field. And uh, maybe you can say a little bit, Danielle, about how we're planning to enhance those features in the ready to loop, both in a value chain perspective, but also in terms of helping even more based upon the benchmarks and the, the readiness data. Yeah, and, and maybe uh, to complement what you said, Tim, uh, we have a very rich data just now in the platform. Mm. So we have about 400 manufacturing companies in there already from 16 different sectors. Uh, across more than 40 countries. And that provides a quite interesting information in relation to how ready you are in comparison to those other companies. In the ready to loop, we of course continue building that up to the different positions in the value chain. But in addition to benchmarking yourself company by company, then there will also be an additional fit feature where you can benchmark yourself to other value chains. And then it becomes very interesting because then you start to understand where are the uh, specific areas in the value chain that you have the biggest potential, mm -hmm. but also what are the partnerships that you should strengthen in order to be able to implement the different circular economy initiatives. And uh, what we see as well is that of course, knowing how ready we are is extremely important. It is the first step, but it is not enough. Uh, we also need to understand how to become more ready to actually be able to fully implement circular economy and capture all of the opportunities connected to it. As the Ellen McCarton Foundation report says, there's about 1.8 trillion euro per year in Europe alone in potential for circular economy implementation. And by becoming more ready, you can really unlock this potential. But um, Knowing how ready I am, how ready I want to be is important, but how can we actually get there, Tim? Can the platform also help with additional tools and knowledge Absolutely. for it? Absolutely. Yeah, so currently we have uh, over 100 tools in the platform, and those tools are actually openly available. The only thing you have to do to, to get access to the, tool, to the tools actually is to uh, access the platform and carry out a, a readiness assessment. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the reason for doing that is that we'd like to see the, uh, the, the readiness of as many different companies as possible so we can start to look for patterns. That's the research element that we have in the, this project is to see what are the patterns. And we're starting to see some 
really interesting patterns about the readiness of certain branches and sectors, the readiness of certain types and, and sizes of companies. And uh, we've seen that smaller companies seem to be more flexible and more ready, maybe not surprisingly, uh, but in a number of other areas, uh, we're, we're seeing that small companies can really play an important role in uh, helping us to transition to a circular economy. Mm -hmm. And we're really excited to see how the, the, the features we're going to be building in to, to the platform can, can help us to see how that is on a value chain perspective. But back to the tools, we have those over 100 tools which are categorized currently in terms of uh, how ready you are as uh, an organization according to your own readiness assessment and according to what stage you're and what type of a, a process or an approach you'd like to take uh, going forward. We will see, I guess, uh, some more tools being added. I don't think we need too many more tools than 100. Uh, but then the nice thing about the platform is that it, it helps to to whittle down all those many tools and uh, to make a suggestion of a handful uh, according to, to your uh, chosen path. And you can either do that as a user on your own, and, uh, but of course, in an absolute, uh, to a large extent, it's also what uh, the, the consultants are going to be helping with mm -hmm. uh, if you take an accelerator project as well, is to exactly whittle down and say, these are the tools in some form of a, a bespoke process to, to go through. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have on the platform just now and what we're building uh, going forward and, and already actually building. And looking at patterns across value chains, I think is going to uncover an awful lot of uh, potential to, to actually to realize beyond the pilot project, beyond the good intention and beyond uh, putting the, the business model and the business plan uh, in process to actually doing it. Because if we're going to design for recycling, if that would be our circular strategy, we need to be able to make sure that we can recycle the product at the end of the life. That's one partner. And also, if we're really going to uh, do the right thing, to be able to use the materials from our recycled products back into uh, the new products uh, in the future. And by the way, design for recycling is probably one of the last strategies we'd choose, maybe design for reuse or design for refurbish or upgrade or even complete new business models. And that's what we're also going to be helping to, to see how do we navigate those different strategies both within our own company, but also across the, uh, the the value chain. Good. So I hope you're getting something uh, of a taste of, uh, uh, number one, what's going to be in the Ready to Loop project, but also uh, how excited we are about it. Um, I'm not sure if there's been any questions in the Q&A session, uh, but um, I think it's time now. We said we'd try and give uh, about uh, 15 minutes for uh, for questions and answers. And I hope that you've been brewing the questions in, in your minds as we've been talking and, and discussing. But uh, for that, um, I'd like to in, invite uh, Yura, uh, Yura Larison on, on uh, stage. And Yura is our project and communications coordinator uh, at DTU uh, Mechanical Engineering and also uh, is uh, very, very tightly uh, connected to the Ready to Loop project. Uh, Yura, you've got your, uh, your little uh, uh, crib sheet uh, ready in front of you and are collecting have been collecting questions and uh, there's somebody, a couple of other people backstage feeding the questions to you as you talk. <laughs> so maybe uh, we could take uh, That's the right. I've got my the questions here on my phone. So let's go with the, the first question. Um, so it says knowledge. Um, the knowledge that, that's available at the moment about materials, their status, availability, lifespan and their carbon footprint impact. Or a, bit, or a big bottleneck. What is your take on this and what are the methods to uncover all this data earlier for the stakeholders? Yeah, I think that these science-based targets are really providing some methodologies on how to keep track of these data and understand how to calculate the CO2 footprint for different materials. But there's a whole uh, database available for life cycle assessment. And they've been there for quite many years ago. So I would definitely recommend looking to the available databases and trying to understand how to measure the carbon footprint of your product, not only at the material level, but from an overall life cycle perspective, considering raw material extraction, manufacturing, distribution, the uses, usage phase and end of life because that's there exactly where circular economy can help by maybe allowing less products to be produced, mm -hmm. but maybe extending the usage phase of those products 
and being able to upgrade, remanufacture and so forth so that you keep the maximum value of your materials and therefore you minimize the overall carbon footprint that you need to deliver a given function. Absolutely. I'd, I'd say also that there's, um, there's always, always a question of uh, allocation uh, when we're talking about life cycle assessments uh, over multiple life cycles. Uh, we have many, many research colleagues who are working on uh, the solutions for that and also consultancies who are working on uh, trying to, to work on that also. Um, and there's also other tools out there like the material circularity indicator, which uh, um, is, a, is a nice tool on a materials level. But as I think I'd echo what you say, Daniela, it's important not just to focus on materials because when we get to materials, we've uh, used all the other priorities up about uh, <clears throat> keeping products uh, in circulation for longer, taking different approaches to actually providing value, uh, which is decoupled from the resource consumption in the first mm -hmm. instance. So I hope that answers your question. Let's go on to the next question. How do you engage various stakeholders to reach, come up with a pragmatic and actionable policy or program? How do we uh, help them to, to in, say, say that again, sorry. How do you engage various stakeholders holders to reach slash come out with a pragmatic and actionable policy or program? Right, yeah, so I, I, if I'm understanding that as being uh, stakeholders inside companies, um, I think that the, the approach of getting out to as many different parts of the organization as possible is, uh, is really important. Um, we're seeing it in the companies that we're collaborating with that um, sustainability and circularity have never been as, as um, discussed as they are uh, today. Uh, and also it's not about uh, whether we should do it, but uh, what we should do and how we should do it. And I think that's a really nice stage to uh, to, to reach in, in industry, and it's also really necessary. And I think uh, that many companies, as, as, as we're seeing, actually are looking for exactly how to uh, not find the stakeholders, but actually how do we find the right boundary objects and the right approaches to uh, uh, to working together. And of course, in, in uh, um, all modesty, we're, we're hoping that uh, the Ready to Loop uh, platform will be one of mm. the ways which it will help to, to see the stakeholders within an organization, but also within and across value chains. How do we identify them and see the opportunities? And again, through the uh, working with the tools and the approaches um, uh, yourselves as companies, but also maybe through the accelerators to see how can we uh, uh, identify uh, the, the low hanging fruits, first of all, but also make a strategy for a longer term uh, collaboration with different stakeholders. Yeah, and maybe just to add on that, there's a one trend that I want to share with you that we see from the users of the Match platform. Uh, in the beginning, when we started this project about four years ago, the key stakeholders engaging and trying out the readiness assessment were the sustainability people. But it's really nice to see that evolving over time. So right now, we have almost an equal distribution of sustainability experts, product development experts, business experts, even finance people coming to the platform and making the assessment, which shows two main things. I would say the first one is that yes, um, there are different stakeholders that need to be involved in this assessment. But the second one, and I think the most important one is that it shows that it's only through collaboration that you can really implement cir circular economy. Um, the one person in the sustainability department can do wonders, mm. but if the finance people and the business people are not on board, it will probably not really get implemented. And I think that it applies not only internally for collaboration within companies, but also externally. And that's exactly what Ready to Look aims to bring this external collaboration across companies. Absolutely. Let's move on to the next question from the audience. Um, what are the experiences from other companies using the platform? Can you say something about environmental impact and cost slash savings? Yeah, we can. Uh, so we're really happy that uh, we're building Ready to Loop on top of uh, a, a platform which is there already, which we created over the last four years, the Match platform. <clears throat> on that platform, we actually have 10 cases of accelerated projects there that have uh, been, been run through all the way from uh, uh, medicinal uh, companies to uh, uh, consumer goods to actually a farm. Um, 
And uh, we've seen a lot of really nice examples in those cases in particular. And you can read about them on the, the platform as well, about how uh, the companies who are using this transition to circular economy and, the, and understanding their readiness to transition to a circular economy as a way, of course, to achieving their sustainability targets. For a long time, the circularity and sustainability have somehow been uh, often uh, kept apart, but I think increasingly we're seeing circularity as a, a means to, to sustainability. And as you said as well at the beginning, Daniela, that it's, uh, it's almost half of, the, of the, uh, um, the CO2 reduction is, is estimated to be able to come from uh, circular economy initiatives. So I'd encourage the, uh, the question to, to look at the cases on the Match platform, uh, which is now called the Ready to Loop platform. If you type Match DK, it'll go into Ready to Loop uh, on its own and uh, look at those cases. Mm. And we're going to be increasing the amount of cases uh, over the years, uh, well, by a factor of 10 or 10, actually. So, yeah. um, so the next question says, can you give Oh, sorry. Can you give an example how collabor about on how collaboration about data in the value chain can unfold? Yeah, I would say that there are two really big mega trends that we see today in the world. The number one is circular economy, and of course, I'll say this is number one. But the number two is digitalization, and that's where the two meet. Data transparency is extremely important to ensure collaboration across different stakeholders in the value chain. Imagine that we stop selling our products and we start providing them as a service. It's really important to keep track of usage, to keep track of how we are uh, maintaining those products over time to ensure that we are providing the biggest value and that we are capturing the value at the same time. And uh, there, I would say that over the last 10 years or so, there's been more and more willingness for companies to share data and to collaborate. And it's especially applicable for circular economy where there are many non-competitive collaborations that happen and that are only enabled due to data. Um, will the evalu evaluation and recommendations from the project, if we engage now, be updated when the other elements become ready by 2024? Really good question. <laughs> yes, is the answer. Yeah, thanks for the question. So it, it of course, we need, to, we need to think about this four years ago, <laughs> about uh, making sure we, we uh, have um, uh, transferability of uh, readiness across the different value, uh, value chain positions. And uh, so there's a couple of things we're doing to, to ensure that. Firstly, we're making sure that um, as many of the uh, the questions as we can possibly manage to have will go uh, across the different value chain positions. So we have some form of a of a fixed point uh, to to evaluate across the different uh, uh, value chain positions, and that would be possible. But of course, a raw materials manufacturer uh, doesn't, in the same way, have a product development process as a manufacturing company does, and a uh, a, a um, a waste manager, which is now called uh, a, a, a materials uh, or a value, um, I've forgotten the word now, the, the term, but a, uh, what we used to call waste managers, um, uh, wouldn't have the same um, uh, need to assess their readiness in, in other dimensions, maybe about um, uh, maintenance of uh, goods on behalf of their customers and so forth. So the, the platform will develop in a way that the different positions will look different. There'll be different dimensions and there'll be different questions in there. Um, so that's the one part of it. The other part is, and what now if I engage now in, in the project and in a few years time, uh, we'll see new elements coming and new value chain partners coming in. We're basically trying to think ahead already now to say, how do we build in if the, uh, another value chain partner comes in the different um, um, areas of collaboration, the different areas of comparison, there will be updates, but we'll make those along the way as they come. But it's something which is a really important uh, thing to consider. Right? Yeah, and I would add that it's of course really expected that the readiness will increase over time. So the readiness of a given company today is hopefully not going to be the same six months from now 
-hmm. and hopefully again not the same uh, 12 months from now mm -hmm. and it's important to keep those assessments updated yeah. so that you keep getting the most uh, out of the platform and you keep planning how to get better and better Absolutely. and better uh, over time and uh, of course all of those updates will be taken into account when we add the new positions in the value chain so you only get more data uh, and more insights over time and uh, we really hope that this will accelerate this transition that we need to happen yesterday <laughs> right. i see there's lots of questions there we're running a little short on there time are. so maybe maybe um, one or two final questions we have. how does the project oh sorry what does the project require from our side so for instance, data collection, participation, time. Yeah. So if you're a company, if you're a manufacturing company uh, or a raw materials company or <clears throat> any company in a uh, in the value chain, uh, that's what I'm assuming you know, the, the question is coming from. The preparation, first of all, is to, you can do it in two ways. You can open the platform yourself already today and uh, make yourself a profile and start to work with it and make your readiness uh, assessment. Even within the platform, you can invite your colleagues. The way in which it identifies you is by your email address. So uh, everything that comes after the at symbol collects your, your colleagues together. And we ban Gmail and Hotmail and other addresses for the same reason. We want to have company addresses as the identifier. We can always identify if one company has two or three email address types, we can put them together, of course. Uh, but that's the way in which you can start is to invite as many colleagues as possible to have a look at the platform, to look at the tools and methods and to start using them. The other way, of course, is to start and uh, uh, by engaging on an accelerator project. Uh, the more you've done in the platform already, the better, because the more you can spend time on working through the process that Mila and Nikki uh, uh, explained before from actually really making that acceleration and making the change. That will take some time to prepare uh, in terms of in advance uh, of uh, the, the activity. The first workshop is about coming in, saying what you think your readiness is. And then after that, it'll be about uh, some data collection and, and there will be some hours that you'll need to, to invest in that. The more you invest in your own hours, the more you get out of it, of course. But it will be in terms of uh, data uh, elements along the way, uh, in small pieces of, of preparation, depending on what your approach uh, will be going forward. Any yeah. more time for questions? Maybe one final question. Yeah. I think we might have time for before we wrap up. We already have um, a circular business model. This question says, how can we benefit fit from ready to loop? I'd say that the, the business model is one of the dimensions that we have in the ready to loop platform. Mm -hmm. It is an important one, but it often requires that you become ready in other dimensions as well. So for instance, if you are changing your business model from selling products to providing products as a service, most likely you also need to focus on uh, product design to develop products that will last for longer and that will enable those service-based business models. Yeah. Or if you are planning to take back your products uh, by means of your new business model, you also need to understand what are the legal and, and market readiness for it so that you can actually implement your initiative. And uh, what we often say is that it doesn't really matter where you decide to start, there will always be potential to make that stronger if you have a holistic perspective mm -hmm. and if you look into uh, different dimensions. And Ready to Loop can help you to do it. It can help you to understand what is the next area that you need to focus on for, in your case, make the business model more feasible both from a resource developing point of view, but also from a financial and economical point of view. Yeah, and also uh, that as time goes on, increasingly in a value chain perspective, to make sure that your business model actually starts to, we, we can put the power to it and, and, and really add the, the necessary partners in the value chain to mm -hmm. make it actually happen. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at the clock and I'm going to ask our tech guy, how much time do we have left? <laughs> One minute. Okay, then I think we may stop. I'm not sure uh, uh, how many uh, questions we have left uh, on the uh, the system, Yuda, but I think uh, what we're going to do is to make sure that we uh, basically answer them uh, online and we'll put them mm -hmm. on the Ready to Loop uh, website um, as, as, as well for 
uh, the ones we've answered, uh, we'll transcribe those and also put the answer to all the other questions on, on the slide as well. So I think you may as well stay here because we're just going to okay. close off now anyway. <laughs> so, so I think the only thing left mm. for us to do is, is to, uh, to thank you for coming along to this webinar. We hope that you've uh, enjoyed it. We hope you've got something out of uh, the main ideas for the Ready to Loop project. Um, and we hope you're going to follow us and really engage with us over the next uh, four years. It's going to be four different years because we're going to be adding new ingredients and new levels of complexity, but also new opportunities each time uh, we uh, we go along. So many, many thanks for from all of us uh, in the, uh, the DTU studio here. <laughs> and we're really looking forward to collaborating with you going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.